Hi everybody! <laughs> Welcome to episode number three, Fear of Success. Thank you for joining me. Have you... I want to start with a question. How to recognize this? Well, have you ever felt like you got a momentum and things are going really well and you are crushing it, things are getting better and better and then boom, something happens and you fail. Or you feel your relationship is going really well and it feels too good to be true. Well, that might be the fear of success sneaking in. Whenever you feel things are too good to be true or you feel, oh my God, things are going so well, I need to go just this one meeting and things are going to be perfect and you overslap the day. Well, that's another representation of fear of success. When there was a situation in my life when I really discovered this is something that is holding me back. And that happened several years back when I was taking a class. It was a business law class and I really liked it. It was kind of fun because my mind is very analytical. So I it was really interesting and cool. Well, I enjoyed it till the moment when we got the papers back from our fan final exam and the teacher went in front of the classroom and said there's only one person who got full amount of the points in the test and now I cannot name the person but I really want them to speak up to raise their hand so I can acknowledge them in front of this classroom well that person was me and I didn't raise my hand and I felt terrified. I felt horrible. I was beating myself up. Well, maybe I shouldn't have, you know, maybe I should screw up some. I, I really, this is no good. Like everybody's gonna kill me. That's how I felt. I wanted to become a little tiny ant and crawl in my backpack and wanted to disappear from the classroom. So I didn't say anything. I, pre I looked somewhere else. I pretended like, no, this is not me. No, 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 no. I, I had no idea who that could be. <laughs> so the teacher was very uncomfortable. So there was a few minutes, I'm, I guess minute of silence, when he was saying, well, I, I really, this is not a big deal. Just, just you know, raise your hand. And uh, I really didn't. And at the end of the class, so he moved on and he was talking about something else later. But at the end of the class, I remember me walking out of the classroom and having one last look at the teacher. And I saw the teacher like looking at me, like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and that was the moment I realized, oh my God, what is wrong with me? <laughs> What's happening that I felt like serious physical fear of raising my hand and saying I was the best. I was the person who got the full points. Just me saying it to you right now feels super like my body wants to shake and just go away. Um, that's the fear of success. So for me, I realized that was a breakthrough experience in a way that was horrible, but really great because I realized, oh my God, this little detective Lucy, <laughs> that curious part of me was like, hmm, I wonder what, what is that? Let me see what it is. And so I journaled about it. <laughs> That's the power of journaling. And I realized, oh my God, this started when, you know, my sisters didn't like when I got something and they didn't or when uh, I was sick, I got juice and they didn't. Well, they didn't like me for it. And I'm like, I, I want them to like me. And I, I noticed all my friends that, you know, I told them, hey, this is the right answer, say it. I didn't raise my hand. I told everybody else, hey, just do it. So I, it's great about me because it serves to me as a coach. I love people around me to be success, successful and I love supporting them because that makes me feel better. But the other downside of that is I don't want to share about myself. I don't want to share my success because it makes me fearful. Because before I had the experience, people didn't like me. People either were threatened by me or they were jealous or they hated me. And I was, I was afraid. Um, that realization that day helped me discover that really this is something that's holding me back. And that also keeps me playing small. And that is not in the, in the big picture. This is not serving anyone. 
you know, one of the tools, so, so my toolbox, this is the, what I'm creating this kind of, the first step is awareness. Before I was aware, I wasn't able to do anything about it. Now, okay, how do I deal this with this when I know this is happening? So one of the tools that, that helps me is realizing, okay, if I'm playing small and I'm listening to this fear to keep me safe and not to share with anyone, then I'm really not living to my fullest potential. I even don't know what my potential is because I even am not trying it. And um, I, I ask myself, well, what if the people that invented, let's say, contact lenses, everybody who wanted to ever invent a contact lens, they would be like me in the past. Like, well, I cannot do this. Like everybody in my area would hate me for that. They would be jealous. Maybe they would even shoot me. <laughs> In the US, it could possibly be. But uh, so they would never invent this contact lens that I'm using every day. Without that, I wouldn't be able to see or wouldn't be able to function properly. So I'm so grateful that these people who invented contact lenses and who worked and were not afraid of what other people were think of them or what is it, they were not afraid of success, they did it and they created something that I'm using every day. I'm grateful for every day. So I'm asking myself, like, what what if there's something in me that I can share with others that can make a difference for others? But if I'm playing small and I'm listening to my fear, I'm not going to ever discover it and nobody ever is going to discover it. So it really doesn't serve anyone to listen to my fear of success. So look, it could be in any area in relationships, health, look into yourself. Like what is it that you really, really want and ask yourself, Hmm, what would it be like if I was successful in this area of my life? If I had the figure I have always wanted, what would it feel like? And, and really imagine what it is. And if you realize, well, I actually think rich people are assholes <laughs> or rich people are not spiritual. Maybe that's the fear of success talking or when you, that is the inner work. That's another tool that I'm suggesting. And there's one other tool that I wanted to share with you. And that's one of the books. Um, the author is, let me show you. This is a, The Big Leap by Guy Hendricks. So he's talking about upper limit. And uh, the way the upper limit manifests in our lives is we are comfortable with a certain degree of success. In a way, you know, we, we are comfortable with making a certain amount of money. Or we are comfortable with weighting a certain weight and anytime we we get kind of oh, cross we break through we want to go back because it feels uncomfortable like who would I become if I'm successful what does it mean about me if I make more money what would the people around me think about that um, so I really recommend that book that that can help also um, and no matter how many tools you use, always look also on the last steps of this formula. Just take action. For me also, it the last tool I wanted to share was the reminder of if everybody played small, if everybody was fearful of success, we would not have cars, we would not have buildings, we would still live in a cave. So people, hope this was helpful. Oh, I wanted to say, um, first, thank you for following me and watching me and allowing me this opportunity to, to raise my fears. Um, and I would love your feedback. If you have any, any, next week I wanted to talk about fear around money, but if you have any other suggestions, I would love your suggestion. And tomorrow is the Friday the 13th, so it's a perfect day to face our fears. I, I'm possibly thinking about talking about fear of failure for what else can fail on the Friday of the 13th. So we'll see. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much and have a great night. Bye.